Hello. Hello, hello, hello. All right, let's start it up. We're going to look at the secondary real quick. And I start, I'm start. i starting off with uh, the fact that uh, one thing people need to pay attention to, Jared Goff did not throw passes above, you know, 18 yards or 15 yards even. He tried it a few times, and when he did, he I think he had two completions above 15 yards. Other than that, it was dink and dunk all day long for, for those. And, and I'm showing those, but for those who think that we didn't do that well. On this play, you'll see Trayvon Diggs right here. He's playing the inside shoulder or upfield shoulder of Cup, and Cup just stops on him and hits him with this route. But this is one of two passes above 18 yards, right? Uh, the other ones were catching runs for more, more, more yardage due to not only bad angles on screens, but bad angles on um, just the way we were playing the screens, period, like the way we were going about it. Those defensive ends were kind of giving up those yards underneath, and I'll show that a little later. You see here, when he tried to take those longer steps and look up field, he didn't have time. Here's Joe Thomas hitting him on one, um, and this was either you know a, a, either a close pass breakup or almost a bang-bang play by Darian Thompson or even an interception if it would have been deflected in any way he would have gotten there. So as you can see, they, they weren't going to have success, and we determined that they weren't going to have success pushing that ball up field and trying to get deep on us. They were trying to attack Trayvon Diggs due to his inexperience. You see them there. They use that that moving natural screen to move him away from his his assignment. But on that particular play, um, Jalen gets his hand in there and saves him and almost gives him an interception on a play where he was kind of washed out on that. There's no way he would have got off that rub. It was two guys rubbing. He couldn't get he couldn't go through it all around that. Um, there's there it is again. There's another one. He tried to step back there and stay back there a little longer, and it turned into an interception for him because Alden had time to get there. Even though he was in the shotgun, and he only took like two steps after he caught the ball. Goff had someone in his face when he tried to sit back there and look up Phil. Without play actions, he had no time to do this. And even on the play actions that gave him the time, he wasn't delivering. Uh, on that particular play, he delivers a pretty good ball. It was kind of high, but uh, it was incomplete. Um, they were attacking Anthony Brown too, but Anthony Brown, I think, held up pretty good uh, on the deep stuff. Uh, it was the underneath stuff that he wasn't really, uh, you know, it, they were tricking him on some of these underneath plays you'll see. Um, but there, you, there it is again. That's that's Trayvon. I'm not picking on Trayvon. Someone asked me to break him down, so I'm showing you the, the, the coverage against Trayvon Diggs in the beginning of this video, and then we'll dig into screen passes and things like that a little later. But uh, he just barely misses that one and almost gives up a play there. But that was another play that was above 15 yards, but as you can see, it wasn't thrown beyond 15 yards. So, um, that's that's a feather in the cap for the defense. You know, I know I don't like uh, I don't like consolation prizes, but that is one uh, moral victories. Here's the only play, the only deep ball thrown all day, and we didn't even beat up Trayvon for this one because again he played per pretty good defense. It was great defense. We've seen Cheeto and Anthony Brown in these situations for years. Um, I think if he doesn't press on this particular play, being as though he was by himself, he would have been all right. But now let's take, let's pay attention because we, we say Alden Smith had the best game, and he did in regards to plays made, but also plays given. Him and D-Law gave up a lot of plays early on, and let's show you why. All right, and I'll prove what I'm saying. You see how his hips are turned all the way up, Phil? I mean, down, down, down horizontally. This is his assignment. He's allowed to hit this jet sweeper. We never did it until the second half, but you're allowed to hit these guys. And when you don't hit them, you see that they'll, they'll get right behind you and they'll come downfield. And when you come down the line looking for that running back inside, that's what happens. This wasn't a block in the back, but C.D. Lambs was. I had to point that out because I don't know how you don't call that one a block in the back and you call C.D. Lambs bodying a guy using his hip a block in the back. I don't know. All right, really, he hit him in the side. It wasn't even the back. Here's Khalil Mack. You see Khalil Mack at the bottom of the screen? You see him? See, um, um, I believe that's Kamara at the top. A Muka Mary at the top, but you see they widen out on those short routes to take it, take those flat routes away. You widen out and then you just have someone get down, get up field at that quarterback at golf and force the ball out of his hands on those plays. And we weren't getting that early. We were, you know, trying to get to the run so bad or trying to get to the quarterback so bad. We were over pursuing and being over aggressive on these plays because when those jet sweeps come out, this is this. I blame Jalen in the first video, and this is why we watch so much film. This wasn't his man. He was watching the run on this and the running back because that was his man. That was actually on Alden Smith. Alden's supposed to widen out and block this off and knock Woods off his route. So so it gives Jalen time to get down here, right? Jalen, by the time he recognizes that it's a screen to the wide receiver to the outside, he's late to it. But that was because Alden is supposed to widen that out. And I can prove that with the film here. You see this? 
They widen these guys out by hitting and pressing those releases on the outside. They'll jet sweep or the tight end on the backside. doesn't matter. Or receiver. doesn't matter who it is. They'll hit them on the backside. And this is why Chicago held golf to one of his worst games. And do you see Camille Mack on this play? He's not getting his hips turned into the quarterback. He just kind of like straddles up and watches inside just in case he needs to trail that running back late. But then he gets back outside, and because he does that, it forces Goff to hold that ball, and Goff is not anything. He's, he's, he's a mere mortal when you force him to hold the ball. He's nothing. Um, serious. Here you see us playing it a lot better. That's Alden Smith actually getting out in space and doing it the right way this time, even though they do make about seven yards on that play. But that's more so what we wanted from him. Uh, there's Khalil Mack getting upfield, but look where Floyd is. Floyd widens out. Now, he doesn't stop the screen. He doesn't come down and stop it because he has guys in front of him. But he does force Goff to kind of look to see what's going on, hold the ball a little longer. And once he once he gets the ball out there, he sheds that block and he gives his he forces the ball back inside, which gives his guys a chance to rally to it and stop that screen. Here we are doing it correctly. You see, on both sides, when we started to adjust, we hit those guys. And we were hitting those guys. They couldn't do anything. Goff has nothing to do with the ball. And I can give this away to any team who wants to watch it. <laughs> but golf has nothing he can do with the ball. If you just hit those jet sweepers and you're allowed to hit them because they're in the backfield, fucking hit them. Don't cover them. You don't have to worry about where they're going. Hit them. Those defensive ends fire off and hit hit that guy. And then it forces golf into two-man routes because all the other two or three men that are out deep, he, they have to get open, and they have to get open in time because Goff's not looking for you early. He's looking for you late. So you have to get open in time before that pass rush actually adjusts and gets to Goff, right? That's how you beat them, not this way, not getting so far inside that you lose contain because D-Law, if he'd have kept contain on this play, he gets underneath these three routes that are down the bottom, and you know that, that disrupts or disrupts at least the throw on Goff's behalf. Even though this was still in, incomplete, it wasn't incomplete because D-Law did it right. He did it wrong that time. I'm going to show you. You see at the bottom, Khalil Mack is trusting his team. You know, when you're rushing five most of the time, which we were, you that that, sec, that that fifth guy can decide on that back end to help his team out by widening those receivers out or getting in those hot lanes. That's what you're supposed to be doing when you're up there. And this is why I say Jalen should be on the outside as well because I think those types of assignments, Jalen has more than enough athleticism to deal with that, and he would kill these. Uh, if you made it this simple for him as far as the pass is concerned. Hey, stop the short shit, you know, accelerate to the edge on them short short routes. Woods played that route right. He just wasn't athletic enough to make a play in space. But, um, you know, stop the short shit and, and make sure they have to, you know, look up field. That's what this defense is built for. And when we started doing it, they had nothing. They scored seven points when we adjusted and started doing this the right way. Here it is again. That's uh, uh, Everson Griffin knocking that down this time. But it's the same thing. When we started coming upfield, Instead of trying to converge on a quarterback and a running back, coming up field, kind of break down and, and see and assess what's going on and get in those short passing lanes. When we started doing that, the Rams couldn't do much of anything. They weren't running that well against us because we changed up where we lined up Dantari Poe. Uh, but as far as the pass is concerned, uh, we started shutting those short things, those short routes down uh, once we started coming up field. Look, look at this again. Now, that's, that's D-Law blocking Cup inside and trapping him inside. And then up top, you'll see, um, I believe that's, I think that's Dorrance Armstrong just getting in the way of Woods. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. And that's what I mean when I say that's on with those little screen passes and, the, and those, uh, those jet sweeps are on the defensive ends and our outside linebackers to stop. And when they start playing those correctly, uh, we, we did a lot better. So, you know, the rest of these plays that you'll see playing out, unless I, unless I showed any more, I think I got all the jet sweeps. These will just be the completions, some of the completions that you saw in that game. And what you'll pay attention to and what I want you to see is golf wasn't trying to throw anything deep because he couldn't. He didn't have time. If he tried to throw, if he, stay, if he stayed back there longer than three seconds, we were on him. So he had no time. That's actually a good thing for this defense. The defense played better than we gave credit. They only gave up 20 points. And I think the thing that they were struggling against was understanding how to attack these jet sweeps and that's because we had two guys who don't play defensive end in the three four Floyd and, and Khalil Mack that's all they do so Khalil you know although that's Khalil Mack he is a bona fide beast you know he was able to do that because there's the experience to do it once these guys adjusted Alden and uh, D-Law once they adjusted and I know it'll be more of an adjustment for D-Law than Alden because D-Law is very aggressive 
and you can't be as aggressive uh, when you're standing up because uh, of the fact that you do have some coverage responsibility uh, and you have to think a little bit because sometimes you might be told to blitz or play zone and you might have the option and that option is going to come based off of what type of action you see in front of you pre-snap or, or, or post-snap depending uh, depending on the leverage that you are whether you're you know on the short side or long side of the field depending right you'll know so D-Law there on his way to the quarterback got his hands up you know he, he didn't get there Got his hands up, didn't didn't uh, didn't hit the ball, but you see he was he was coming downhill with his mind on that ball coming out early and being ready to get his hands in those hot lanes. Um, but these are the receptions, man. Other than other than the one against um, um, Trayvon in the beginning, and I think another 18 yarder to cup uh, against Trayvon, they didn't go upfield at all. Everything was five yards, four yards in the flats, and then just catch and run. And we did an okay job tackling, except for maybe two or three plays. So the defense played pretty good. They didn't get gashed. Uh, they just needed to shore up a few things. And I think if they shore up the the way they cover and the way they you know go about handling these uh, misdirection plays, um, I think we'll we'll grow into what we need to be. Plus, we get Velcro back, and I think he's also a missing piece because he can he can uh, he can create some coverage matchups that are unique to us. But again. Uh, shout out to you guys who tuned in today on Saturday. We got the Falcons tomorrow, and I'm going to keep banging them out. I know they're kind of late because I'm I'm sitting here trying to get these edits done faster. But ah, uh, hey, this is when they come. That was a short catch too. That was whirly. That was a short catch and run. But um, let's let's deal with the Falcons tomorrow. The Falcons don't try to throw short nearly enough or nearly as much. So we should have far more success against the Falcons if they try to push up field on us, even though that's Julio Jones we're dealing with. No disrespect to him. I think we got the Falcons, though. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.